Kaiser, and welcome to Profoundly Speaking uh, Virtual Sessions. Hope you're well today. Hope that life is uh, submitting and working with you and coexisting with you and assisting you in purpose. I pray that the atmosphere and life itself is assisting you in your pursuits. And I know when we feel in trouble and when we feel out of line, and when we just have trouble, financial, relational, job, pandemic, trouble, you could hear words like what I'm speaking and it could seem so philosophical and it could appear that I'm supposed to say this because of the position of a leadership that I have. And it's funny when we feel that we are social media people or ministers or teachers or authors or whatever, <clears throat> because we have a way of looking at what people do for a living and we could determine their financial ability and where they live and their prestige, that they are above things. We could look at what a person do. We could watch an actor or a celebrity and they could talk about what they're dealing with. And we could say, but I wish I had your money though. We could look at a person's significance in life. And so we attach finances to what they do. And we could silently wish that we had their problems or I wish I had your money or I wish I had your ride or I wish I lived the way you did. And it's easy to do that. And it's easy to hear someone like me say, I hope that life is assisting you. Because you may wonder, how does life assist in the pursuit of purpose? How does the atmosphere? As a matter of fact, Faisal, what is the atmosphere? It's a lot of things that we can say in a meeting at church. God is shaking the atmosphere or he's shifting the atmosphere. And there's a lot of words that make sense in the building. There's a lot of words that make sense at the revival. A lot of words that make sense on Sunday morning in church before or doing worship before the teaching. But when you look at life, when you look at Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and you begin to look at life and you and you and Saturday, and you begin to say, I hope that the atmosphere is assisting you. No, you just want money to pay the bill and you need enough money for Netflix and you need stuff like that. How many of you know what I'm talking about? But I'm actually praying and hoping that life itself is assisting you on your journey. And I hope that the atmosphere and the energy of the earth is walking alongside you. When I was coming up as a saved young man, I loved the Lord and loved this word, but I never thought of things like the atmosphere following me and energy assisting me. We were just trying to read the Bible consistently and tolerate going to church without uh, leaving out. We felt if we were going to be deeper with God, we needed to be able to stay into us in the service the entire service without sneaking out the back. If I wanted to feel that I was growing in the Lord, I wanted to sit and listen to the message from the beginning to the end. If I wanted to have a feeling of growing deeper in the Lord, I wanted to be able to read my Bible more without falling asleep, which means I have an intentional reading schedule and I know what I'm reading and I'm marking in the Bible now. And so that was growth. So I really never looked at power beyond uh, the church rhetoric. Uh, how do we live significantly beyond the church formula? And so if I hear anything about purpose or destiny and power and moving in the shift, those things were too extra uh, for the basic formula of Christendom that we were accustomed to until I began to move more and more into the rudiments of my purpose and to to interpret this longing that I had for more. You follow what I'm saying? And you begin to find out that, wait a minute, there is energy. There is a vibration of the Lord. There is a oneness power. There is a creative force. But these things were too extra at the time to study. These things seem phenomenal, but they were too extra. Raise your hands if you know what I'm talking about. These things were incredible to hear. And these experiences were awesome, but they were beyond the extra. They were too extra. Uh, from Bible reading and fasting and praying and going to church. It was too extra to get involved in. And so it was out of the radar for some. But I do see that there are some of you who've tapped into this reality. 
there are some of you who've tapped into this purpose and this mindset of oneness. And so I pray that life has been good to you and that you've been good to life. I'm going to say this. I won't be on long. We had a, uh, we had a, a cool discussion this morning in our fundamentals gathering today. And we talked about unity. We talked about unity. We, and then the main thing that we talked about, and I'm going to share this with you, was uh, living from the Father's house. And we had uh, one of our students there uh, that has a need. And I said, well, go ahead and pray about it. And as we begin to listen to the language of how we pray, I had her to go back again and pray as though she lived in the house because we could pray to God. But how many of you pray as though you live in the house with God, that you actually have a father, son, and I'm not meaning gender, but an actual father, son relationship. And when you live in the same space with God, with him being father, the language would naturally shift because psychologically you're living in the same space. And when you begin to live in the same space with God as father, not a symbol of a prayer, not a symbol that you put together and you have to see if you lived right in order to claim this relationship. Because when you have children, they're in your house, whether they obey you, whether they wash the dishes or not, there is a freedom and an ownership that they have as a result of living in the house. And Jesus said that in my father's house are mansions. And if it wasn't true, I wouldn't say it. And he said, where I am, you will be. I live from my father's house and you too will live from my father's house. It's just not a, it, the, the father's house is not just heaven when I die, but it's a dimension of living in the same space and consciousness with the father. I'm living in the same space with the Father. So when you live with someone, when you live with the parent, when you live with the source, the language of from which you speak will be different because you live with the source. How I many of you know what I'm talking about? When I live with the source, I don't have to talk to the source as though the source does not know what's going on around me in the space. Because if I live in the space with God, whatever is going on around me is also going on around God. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. So I don't have to talk to God as though he does not know, or I don't have to talk to God as though he needs a report uh, concerning me. Because if we live together, we, in, we are in this together. If God and I live together, we're in this together. So therefore he knows and he, don't, he just don't know what's going on with me because he's God. <clears throat> he knows what's going on with me because we are together. And as a result of him being with me in the car, I don't have to say, do you see this? The only thing I have to say is thank you. I don't have to say, do you see this right here? Do you see what they said? All I have to say is thank you because God and I are in the same space. How many of you live from the feeling and the knowing that God and I are in the same house? I live in the house. And when I live in the house with my parent, I can freely go to and fro in different rooms in the house. How many of you are walking in the father's house freely? How many of you are walking freely in the house? How many of you are using things in the house freely without asking, can I, can I get that or can I get this? When you live in the house, everything in the drawers are yours. Everything in storage is yours. 
Everything in the, in the dresser drawers are yours. Everything in the restroom is yours. Everything in the kitchen is yours. When I live in the house with God, everything in this house is mine. I don't have to battle on if I deserve it. I don't have to say I'm getting mine and all mine. I don't have to say it. I'm in the house. How many believe it? When, I, when you live, see, but like I said, these words about in the house and atmosphere and shifting at atmosphere, that only fits at church. How do you live in the house on Tuesday? How do you live in the Father's house on Monday? How, do you live in the house on Sunday or do you live in the house also on Monday when you have to go to work? Am I living in the house at work? Am I living at the house? Am I living in the house? Because when I live in the house, I'm living in the mind of God. I don't have to, I don't need worship to get me in the mind. Listen, I don't need music to get me in the mind. When I live in my father's house, I'm in his mind already because we're together. I don't need any music to get me ready for. I don't need music to get me ready for a message because I live with my father. I hear him talk every day. I live in the house with him, so I hear I hear his secrets every day. My kids used to say this, you know, and, and we would classify them as PK, preacher's kids. And I could ask them about certain things. And they say, Dad, when you talk about this every day, I kind of know what you mean, because you're always talking about this. See, when you live in the father's house, you don't need a sermon because you hear his secrets every day. How many of you hear what I'm saying? When you live in the Father's space, you always hear the secrets every day because God is always talking every day at home. You don't need the message because your Father is already speaking the secrets every day. Disciples, disciples learn the secrets. The unlearners, they hear the sermon. When you live in the house, there's a certain way you talk because I live in the house with God. I don't talk to God as though I live in my house across the road I live in the house with him. I hear the secrets. And whatever is going on with me, he sees it. And it's not just because he's God. It's because he's in the space with me. He's in the fire with me. He's in the fire with me. He's in the decision with me. He's in the place with me. The posture of how I receive God. The posture from how I receive the relationship determines how I live the relationship. Some of us live the relationship because when we awakened to God, we needed him to get us out of hell. We weren't looking at God being our birth father. We were looking at God being our protector from a fiery place. So if you receive this life to be protected from a fiery place, you're not looking for God to be a, a daddy. You're not looking for God to tell you secrets. You just want to make sure you're not going to hell. But when you receive this life as a birthright, how many of you have received this life as a birthright? I'm born out of him. I'm just not born again accepting him because I quoted the scripture. But I remembered who I am. I'm born out of him. I'm, I'm oh Lord, am I talking too loud? I'm, I'm out of him. I, he birthed me. That's my father. I, he birthed me. I'm out of him. He just didn't find me when I was lying. He just didn't see where I came from and cussing and lying and fixed me up and turned me around. No, 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 he, he birthed me himself out of himself. And he's my birth father. And as a result of him being my birth father, I talk to him like my birth daddy. I'm in the house with him. I'm seated in heaven with him. I'm seated in the high places with him. Even when life looks at me from a low place. I'm in the high place with him. Even though life says I'm in the low place. My posture is high place. I may have squandered some money. I may have squandered some inheritance, but I, I, I did not squander my bloodline. I may have squandered my gift, but I did not squander my identity. I may have squandered my, my portion. I may have squandered my allowance. I may have squandered my responsibility, but I did not squander my, my identity. The, uh, the, the young man, the, 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 the prodigal son, was feeding pigs and eating slop. And he said, look at me. He came to himself. He said, look at me. In my father's house is everything. And I'm sitting here like a common criminal eating slop. He said, I know what I do. 
He said, I'm going to put my pride aside and I'm going to go home. He, he practiced how he was going to tell his daddy that I was wrong because he knew in his father's house was so much to eat and clean clothes and, and hot water and peace. He knew that all I need to do is put this pride aside and tell my father, I know I screwed the money up and I'm going to tell him, don't let me be a son. Just let me work for you. I know you. I can't lose my identity. I might have lost my favor, but I'm not losing my blood. And some of you may be there too. You may say, I don't, I don't need to be known as a son. I know I'm already a son. Let's let me work for you. I done squandered my stewardship. I done messed it up. But let me come home. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. When you know your father's house, you know everything in it. You know everything in it. When it's your father's house, you could go everywhere you want to go. When it's your daddy's home, you just go in there and be son and let him tell you the secrets. And then you build from it. You build from the secrets that your daddy talks about. Because your dad is always talking business every day. God don't talk just to preach. God don't talk at preaching time. God speaks at living time. God don't wait till the singer and sung before he talk. Uh, every father just talks in his house. Every father talks when he's mad, he's teaching. When he's joking, he's teaching. When he's upset, he's teaching. When he's quiet, he's teaching. When he's not talking, he's teaching. How many of you the father is teaching you even when he's mad? Even when he's disciplining you, he's teaching you. Even when he's joking, he's teaching you. Because you live in the father's house. And you're not trying to hustle on how you're going to obey him. No, you live in the father's house. You get relaxed. You live in daddy's house. This is I, And you know what? This is not just daddy's house. This is my address too. How many of you can say the father's house is your address too? This is where I live. I, I, this is not where my daddy lives. We live here together. You begin to think like a Christ would think. He said, when you see me, you see the father. Jesus started not robbery to be equal with God. The scriptures say, let us have this same mind that Jesus had. That didn't think it was not robbery to be equal with God. When you live in the house with God, you don't think you're wrong for being like him. You don't think you're taking his glory. This is my daddy. I'm not taking glory. As a matter of fact, God feels good when other people say I look like him. I got three sons and I love it when they say he looked just like you. And you know what? Some of them say that some of my kids, Zion, look like his mama. Well, I'm glad because if he looked like his mama, he's still mine because I'm the, he's my seed that I put in his mama. So when people see him, they can look at my youngest boy and say, he look, now this one looked just like his mama. Well, even if he looked like his mama, he's me. Even when he looked like the Holy Spirit, he's still me. God made you, even if they say he looked like Jesus, God say he's still mine. When they say, oh, he looked like the Holy Ghost, it's all right, he's still mine. I'm still the, the founder of that seed. I feel good when they say they look like you. I feel good when they say this one act just like his daddy. I don't feel nobody taking nothing from me. I want them to have all of me. I want all my kids to have all of me. I don't feel jealous at all. I don't, I don't want my kids to take me for granted and take my provision without taking my honor. I don't want them to just take my provision and don't respect my honor. But if they respect my honor, I give them whatever they want. You understand? Jesus, God is saying, don't take me for granted. Respect my honor. When I see my kids live in my honor, I give them something without them asking. I'll give it to them without them saying, did you see that I had a problem? I'll fix it. I'll fix it where they live without experiencing the problem. When you honor the father, he will fix it where you don't even feel the problem in your house. When you honor your father from the truth, he'll just lavish you with power so you won't even feel the pandemic touching your life. 
You won't even feel the disease touching your life. You won't even feel the poverty because when you honor the father, he just give you gifts. He gonna fix it where life can't touch you. It'll be around you, but it can't touch you. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? When my kids brag on my love and they do it because it's true, I just, I just load them down with benefits. I'll just load them down with benefits because they touching me by, by loving my honor. Yeah, some kids will play with you to get your provision, but they don't love your honor. But you know when somebody love your honor. You know when your honor is loved because it'll put a virtue on your benefits. And when someone really wants to know the way, your benefits will be touched and you will lavish them with benefits. You will just share the secrets with them. How many of you love the Father's honor? See, you can hear me say that. And say, yeah, I love it. But when you love the honor, you want to imitate your daddy. You want to imitate your daddy without feeling no struggle doing it. Because when you imitate the father, let me tell you something, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to close. I remember when I was a little boy and we used to watch Evil Knievel. How many of y'all remember Evil Knievel? He was a daredevil. And he used to wear that white uniform with the, with the stars coming down. Evil Knievel. And Lord, we love to watch some evil Knievel. And we honored evil Knievel so much that when we went outside, we didn't even have motorcycles. We got our bicycles and made ramps and pretended we were jumping over buses. And then we would ride on our bicycles and stand on the seat and hold the, 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 the handlebars with our legs on the seat. And we, and we, would, we would try to do like evil Knievel. Because whoever you honor, you will imitate. When you honor the skills, you're going to imitate the skill. I can't imitate God if I don't honor him. I can't imitate him if I don't honor him. If I don't find God as the ultimate example, I won't imitate him. So when I honor God, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to try to act like him. And when I honor his mind, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to try to make the sun stand still. When I honor God and I love him, I'm going to go outside and try to make the atmosphere do what I say. When I honor him, I'm going to go outside, Marvin, and I'm going to try to make something out of nothing. When I honor him, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to try to act like <laughs> I can't imitate what I don't honor. I can't imitate him if I don't love him. I, Jesus said, whatever I do, I see my father do. He said, I honor him with everything I see in him. He, he's pleased with everything about me because every time I look at him, I want to copy him because I love him. Oh, God. And I ain't worried about the devil. When I want to honor him, I'm not thinking about sin. I'm not thinking about a struggle. When I, when I want to like you, when I love you, I want to imitate you. I'm not thinking about no sin. I ain't thinking about lying. I'm not thinking about being broke. Because I honor my father. I honor you so much, I want to act like you. I want to act like you. I, I ain't even thinking about I'm broke. I don't even know that I don't have it. I don't even know I don't, I don't even know I'm not qualified. I want to act like you so bad, I don't even know I ain't ready. I don't even know I don't have no money. I don't even know I'm, I don't even know I'm sick. I don't even know I'm dying. I honor you so much, I don't even know I'm blind. I honor you so much, I don't even know I'm broke. I honor you so much, I don't even know I don't know what I'm doing. I honor you so much, I don't even know I'm ignorant. I, I, I want to act like you so much, I don't even know I don't know how to drive. I, I honor you so much, I don't even know what I don't know. I honor you so much, I'm just going out there and doing it. I don't even know I don't know. When you're honoring so much till you don't even know you don't have nothing, then you're going to have everything. When you honor him so much till you want to imitate him without looking at if you got enough to imitate him with. He said, I'm going to load you with benefits. When you honor him so much, you have recognized that you and God live in the same house. And I'm going to talk like I live in the same house with him. And if I live in the same house with God, whatever is God is mine. I believe what God believes. What, you don't even have to ask me what I believe. 
I believe everything God believes. If he believe it, I believe it. Everything in this house is mine too. And I'm using everything. I'm using the water. I'm using the food. I'm using the electricity. I'm using everything that I share the space with. I share the space with God. And because that's my real birth father and not my foster father, I don't have to worry about nothing. I don't have to think I'm lying. I could just go get some water. I don't care if it's late or early. If I'm, if I'm thirsty, I could go get something. If I'm hungry, I could go eat. I don't have to ask him if I could eat because I live in a house with him. So my posture says I'm in the house with him. If he tells me I ain't ready, then I ain't ready. If he tells me I'm not ready, then I'm not ready. Even if he chastises me, I can still drink what I want. Even if he tells me to go cut the yard and wash the dishes, I can still drink what I want because every good father gonna correct his children. Every good father knows the relationship ain't over after an argument. Every good father is gonna argue with his child and say, uh-uh. Every, every good father gonna say to his daughter, if I, don't say me, if I don't see me in that bar, you can't have him. Every good father gonna say, I want my daughter back at this time. Every good father gonna say, if I don't see me in the bar that you're going out with, I don't want you with him. Every good father going to say, if I don't see her, if, if I don't see your mama and her, that you don't need her. Every good father going to give his opinion on what you're doing. Every good father going to say, I want you home at this time. Because that father is trying to train you to see if he can leave everything with you. That good father ain't trying to hinder you. That good father is trying to see if he can leave all of his inheritance with you. That good father wants to see if I can leave everything I own with you and you won't lose it in a day. That good father wants to see if you got the character to take it and grow the inheritance. Even if the good father is correcting you feel and you feel bad, I still own everything in the house. How many of y'all hear what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That good father said, I want to see me and that guy. If I don't see me and that guy, I don't want you with him. That good father knows if, I, if he sees himself in the boy that you like, if he sees himself in the man that you like, then he can trust you with that man. Because if he trusts you with that man, it'll be like you with him. God wants to see people just like him so he can trust you with them. He know you're going to be all right in their hands. He knows you're going to be all right in their hands. He wants to see himself in the people around. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about good father. I'm talking about good father. I'm talking about, I ain't talking good employee. I ain't talking about a good boss. I'm talking about a good employee, a good, a good father. Because some of us have had great employees and you still left the company. Some of you have had good employees and good bosses and you still left that company. Because you said you're looking for something for yourself. But when it's a good father, you're not leaving him. I ain't leaving home. I'm not leaving home. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Y'all go back and listen to this again. I, I want your posture to shift. I don't want your posture to shift when you're in trouble. I don't want trouble to be the reason your posture shifts. I want you to recognize that you and God live in the same house. How do you live every day? knowing that you and God are in the same house. I'm Andre Pfizer. If you want to sow anything and give an offering of any kind, go to Dollar Sign Coach Pfizer and sow whatever you feel in your heart. Or go to the app to the Invest the Gift and sow whatever you want through PayPal. Sow in your father's house. Because see, I'm a grown man. And if I'm living at home, I'm helping on the, on the mortgage. I'm helping on the responsibilities. See, some of you are grown men and grown women. And if you still live in the house with your father, you help on the mortgage. You help on the responsibilities. You help in the father's business. Jesus did. So, so do you. I'm Andre Pfizer. Peace and love to all of you.